So last time, we created this intro right here, which is going to be the abstract intro. And so you know what's going to happen here. We're going to go through all this, yeah, blah, 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 choose a name, whatever. But then the important part is what we're doing today, which is the more cutscene-ish intro, which is going to have a cutscene that plays at the beginning of your game after the abstract intro, if you choose to use it or not use it. And so as you see here, our player is now entering the town, and they're going to say all that stuff, and yeah, now we can play the game. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So first of all, let's actually change what's happening in our original intro. So let's go up to the event right here. First thing we're going to do is make sure the player transfers somewhere else. So in their previous um, tutorial, we actually transferred the player right here. But instead, we want to transfer them to the first cutscene, which is going to occur right here. So let's take them somewhere out of the way. So we'll put them like right here, and then that'll be good to go. And then next, let's actually remove this change transparency off, because we want their transparency to remain on. Let's go to the town one, room one, into this place right here, and let's create a new auto run event for this cutscene. So we'll do auto run, we'll go up here, we'll have this person say, this place sure is empty, like that, it's good enough. We'll hit okay, they'll move down a bit, so we'll do like set movement route of this event, or give gold. So here's an important thing when doing moving events, and we haven't talked about this already, which is the fact that when you have an event like this and you wanna move it, make sure you give it a memorable name. So for example, give gold. Because by default, it's something like E001, and that's impossible to know like what event that is. So just keep something like person that moves first or something. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. Just give it any name. It won't affect the game directly, but it does help you choose which NPC to move when doing movement routes. So let's move them left twice. Let's move them down. Let's make them like wait a bit. So wait like 20 frames. Turn uh, up. Uh, wait another 20 frames. And then turn down. Yeah, sure, that's good enough. Wait another 20 frames, like that. You, you want waiting a lot, so it paces it out. Anyway, after that's done, we'll set it so we show the text of... Hmm... I wonder what I can do. And that'll be that. Then, after this, we're going to transfer the player to the next place a cutscene is going to occur. So first, we're going to transfer them by going to the transfer player right here, click on a new place, and we'll do it to the outside of the town right here, like right here at the edge of the town. Once again, we'll keep the same thing, but we want to make sure the player is looking left, so we'll make it so the direction is set to left, like that. And we'll hit OK and we'll be good to go. And now this time, we want the players to be visible. So this time we're actually going to take our original thing, which was the um, change transparency off, and turn that on. So, change transparency, turn it off, like that. And then we'll go into town 1, they'll start off right here as visible. So in town 1, we'll then create another auto run event. And then here, we'll make it so we'll do a movement route for the player, so like, um... Yeah, here it is, set movement route. Player, move left, move left, move down, move down, move down again, move left, I don't know. Then hit OK, and the player will say, This is a town and stuff. Yeah, there we go. It's a, it's a beautiful default dialogue It's going to appear when they first enter the town in the beginning of the game. And once this is done, we'll turn this auto run event off. So self, self, we'll set self switch A on and then we'll create a new event page and make it so if self switch A is on, it'll go to this. And also we got to make sure to do the same thing with the other event, else it's going to be a little weird when we enter in this room. So if we go in here, we'll make it so that at the end of this, we'll also turn self switch A on here, make a new event page, turn, make it so self switch A is conditioned for this new event page, and we are good to go. And now when we play our game, we'll once again go through our abstract intro, blah blah blah, yeah, name, whatever. Next we'll go into our second intro, which is going to be this cutscene without the players inside of it. So it's going to move left, move left, move down, move down, wait a bit, turn around and stuff. Hmm, what can I do? And now we're going to go to our players right here. They're going to move around. This is a town and stuff. Yeah, and all that stuff. And now we can play. And if we go into this house right here, we'll find that the auto, re auto run event does not run because we turned it to self switch A and then that turned it off. And for the most part, that's really all for this tutorial. That was sort of quick and short, and, but that's really the point. Like, for the most part, you should already know everything that's required to actually create a very introduction type scene. Now, what we do is very, 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 very basic. And you're going to want to create like more NPCs interacting with each other and more stuff clinging together, working together, fixing together, doing stuff. But yeah, we, we didn't, but maybe we will in the future. But that's all for this tutorial. So until next time, RPG Maker tutorial end.